What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping into the giant size X-Men Thunderbird one-shot. A story given to us by Nyla Rose and Steve Orlando. John Proudstar is one of the first mutants to join the X-Men. He is also one of the first to die on a mission for Xavier. In this new Krakoan era, where resurrection is now a possibility, we see the revival of Thunderbird. It is possible that at some time we might see an ongoing line, but at least for the time being, this is a one-shot, and Thunderbird is going to be playing some kind of role in X-Men Red. If you guys would like to check out the appearance of Thunderbird in X-Men Red, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. Be sure to buy the comic, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this giant size one shot, we start off with the resurrection of John Proudstar, with the five catching him up on everything that he has missed, showing him the new world that the X-Men have created for themselves. While many mutants, they choose to stay here on Krakoa after being reborn. John Proudstar, his story starts back home, heading back to Arizona. At this point, Thunderbird is not quite sure how the reception is going to be once he gets back, because John has been gone for a very long time. To many of the mutants on Krakoa, he lies more as a myth than anything else. Not sure if he really belongs on the island of Krakoa. The way John sees it, Krakoa is no different than a reservation. That it's not actual and true freedom when you have to go seclude yourself on an island. And so taking all these things into fact, Actor. The idea that he doesn't, he doesn't really know if he can live up to the myth that mutant kind has made him out to be. Trying to ground himself and root himself in something. That is what leads him back home. This is John's journey in trying to figure out where his place lies in this new world he finds himself. Headed back home to the reservation, he goes to find his grandmother. Hoping that she is still here, hoping that she might still be alive. But upon arrival, what he finds is a ghost town. Some of the children are left behind, and so John goes and has a discussion with them, trying to figure out what happened here. And what happened is somebody cut a deal with the government. Any of these natives that also had the X gene, they were to be rounded up and sold off. When they came to round everybody up, nobody gave up those who have abilities and those who don't. And so they took everybody. They took them all so they could sort it all out, separate the X genes from regular people. Local law enforcement was the one to come in and arrest everybody. For John Proudstar, that is all he needed to hear. Knowing exactly where to go, we see him suit up and he heads off to the police station. And while some of these police officers, they try to stop him, some of them start running their mouth, but Thunderbird is trying to let them know that if you hand over all of my people, no one has to get hurt this day. The police officers unwilling to give up the people. This is where we see the action begin. Thunderbird grabbing one of these cops and Ripping him through the window. As that battle begins, we pick up with the Heritage Initiative. This is an organization that is working under the umbrella of Orcus. What they do is go in, they kidnap individuals with the X gene, they extract this X gene, and they kill the person. What this is really showing us is how far Orcus really branches out. How many different fronts they are attacking all of the X-Men, all of mutant kind. In almost every single issue of X-Men, we see Orcus Orcus in the background, manipulating some situation, whether it be commandeering a moon that surrounds the planet of Mars, or funding organizations that kidnap mutants and harvest the X-Gene. It makes you question the mutants don't kill humans rule, because at the end of the day, they are kidnapping and harvesting mutants. They have done much, much more than that, 
and there seems to be some kind of evidence trail if the mutants do intend to fight this on a, a political battlefield why would this information not be used and brought up on a consistent and constant basis taking us back over to thunderbird he is wreaking havoc in this police station there is not a single one of them that can stop him one by one he is throwing these officers across the room with a giant crash what we see is one of the humvees from the heritage initiative come piling through the door trying to crash directly into proud star but we see thunderbird grabbing hold of this vehicle and he chucks it outside this is where we have the arrival of Edwin Martinick. John Proudstar putting the pieces together that he is responsible for all of this. That this is his deal. John Proudstar ready to serve some justice and revenge because Edwin is responsible for killing his family and now here kidnapping his people. Thunderbird has had enough. Since the last time Thunderbird had fought him, Edwin has gotten quite a bit stronger. As he begins to transform, Thunderbird is giving it to him with lefts and rights to the freaking face. With Thunderbird quickly overpowering him, getting ready to snap his face in half. This is where we see the arrival of John Proudstar's grandmother. She is letting him know this is not the way. This has nothing to do with Xavier's kill no people. This has everything to do with the ramifications that will come after you murdering this guy. Regardless if he deserves it or not. The truth of the matter, if they find him dead, the moment you drop your guard, the moment you walk away from all of our people, you turn your back for that one moment, they will come in swiftly and they will clean house, letting him know that they cannot become the monsters that hunt them, that it will only give them more excuses to attack the people with X-Genes. As Thunderbird begins to stand down, he takes Edwin and he chucks him outside. With the helicopters hovering above them, all of the police officers are surrounding them, but not one of them are moving in. All of those guns, all of that gear, and they know they can do absolutely nothing to stop them from leaving this place. And that's what takes us to a little bit later with John sitting down with his grandmother and they're having a conversation. Just recently planting one of the flowers that's going to grow a Krakoan gate. That means he will have a gateway directly in their backyard. They can go to Krakoa anytime that they wish. And that means all of the mutants that live here as well. As they sit and watch this flower turn into a gateway, John is confessing that he doesn't know who he is. He has woken up in this new world, being a man of two different worlds, both Apache and mutant. He is not sure in which direction he wants to go. He's not even sure if he belongs to either. But his grandmother reminds him that he doesn't have to choose between one or the other. That he he is a man of both worlds and you can be there for both of them. With the gateway now being fully operational, we see the arrival of Warpath and this is a huge moment for him. It has been his entire life he is in utter shock to meet his grandmother. And while his grandmother admits that they could have very well both found one another, that this family reunion, it should have happened so much sooner. At least for Warpath and her, because they didn't know that he was going to be resurrected. But now that he is back, the three of them, they take a picture together, they enjoy their time, and they prepare for what comes next. And Thunderbird is out here ready to serve some justice. He is ready to pick some fights. And while he may not win all of them, he is going to start every single last one. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. It is absolutely amazing to see Thunderbird back in action. And I'm really glad that they're utilizing him. I was really hoping for more of an ongoing story. While it's still a possibility, right now they're utilizing him in X-Men Red. Seeming to have some kind of significant part going on with that story. We're going to have to see how it all plays out. But this is a well-deserved one-shot for Thunderbird.
Thunderbird. Now, Thunderbird, he is a fan favorite, so of course they're gonna do a one-shot for him. As one of the few individuals that was brought back most recently with this whole new wave of mutants that are able to be resurrected. And no one, no one on this island deserves it more than John Proudstar. This issue being a great welcome to Krakoa, John Proudstar. Let's hope they keep up the same energy and we really see Thunderbird shine in the coming X-Men series. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. Now, if you can't do that, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out, and until the next breakdown.